Welcome back everyone. So Larry, we're currently standing at one of the unmotorized paths, right? But your group has some future plans for it, I hear. Yes, we do, as a matter of fact. That's one of the key uh, components of what we're looking at. We've talked about the economic development mm -hmm. on uh, US 23 South. We've talked about the parks uh, around Squaw Bay. But another key part of this would be recreation in terms of non-motorized trails, or bike paths, some people call them. Uh, it came out in the study that there are great opportunities for uh, th essentially three areas. One would be a loop around Partridge Point, where we just were. Mm -hmm. Another would be another trail that would go up the east side of Lake Huron, um, just east of 23 here. And the other one would be extending our current bike path, which we're standing on today. It's called the Alpena Bike Path. It was uh, started in the 80s. Oh, wow. And our plan would be to uh, extend it from its current terminus here at Island Drive all the way down to the new 45th Parallel Park. Ah, oh, so to where we just were. Where we just were, that's right. And in order to do that, uh, several things need to happen. Um, MDOT, uh, the Michigan Department of Transportation, has a what they call a Transportation Alternatives Program grant which is earmarked uh, for non-motorized trails and uh, another component could be scenic overlook, which we're also planning. Um, that grant, uh, we can write that possibly uh, next spring. And also NIMCOG and Northeast Michigan Council of Governments uh, has indicated they might be able to help us write a uh, DNR grant, what's called a trust fund grant for this project as well, for the extension of the Alpena bypass. And uh, what that would do would be something very visible. It's something our citizens could use in a couple of years. Uh, but along with those two grants uh, for the various projects, we'll also need to have a local match money. The granting agencies, whether they be federal or state, are going to want to see that, uh, that the local government, in this case the uh, township, mm -hmm. and the uh, citizens are working together to come up with uh, match money or what's called in-kind services. So in-kind services would be uh, people willing to donate materials or labor or that sort of thing toward the project. How has it been working with the township? Are they a good partner in this whole transition? Uh, yes, they are. We've been working with them actively. Uh, we're at every township meeting and uh, there's a representative from the township that's in heavily involved in our steering committee. So they are aware of uh, all of our plans. We submit them for their approval as well because they do require, of course, a, uh, the local government uh, to be involved. Uh, we're getting ready, though, to ask the township to uh, take this project to the next level, which is to be take more ownership of it, uh, to really feel that, uh, that it's part of their project for economic development and recreational amenities for their citizens of Alpena Township. Uh, we're going to be coming to the township board on June 6th with a request uh, for the trustees to authorize a committee uh, that could be formed with representatives from uh, the township, the city of Alpena, uh, from us, from South Bay Steering Committee, and also a local uh, expert, if you will, from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation who has uh, experience in writing quarter improvement authorities to help us come up with a plan that is a win-win for everybody. It's a win for the township in that they get uh, uh, expertise and funding for maintenance projects that are going to be required on, the, uh, on this endeavor in the future, but also for the project itself because it needs funding and it needs funding from local government in establishing a TIF or a tax increment uh, financing plan uh, would be one way to do that. So we'll just get together hopefully and work out the details. Awesome. So have you been able to really hear from residents and the community and their reactions to you know this overall project? Um, and if and if there were some some negative responses, how are you how are you trying to ease those fears for people? Well, that's a great question. We started our uh, first public input sessions at the Alpena Mall in 2013, and we've had uh, five since then. And we're actively involved with the, with the citizens because we want everybody to feel that this is our project. We want to be very transparent. And I think we have been, the media, of course, has been very uh, good to kind of show what's happening and to cover what's going on. Um, some of, there are some concerns as there is with any project of this size. This is some uh, $28.5 million project potentially. And uh, some of the early concerns that came out was uh, 
some development uh, along Partridge Point uh, in the uh, what's called the Alvar shoreline there or the Partridge Point Park. Uh, we've worked with the residents actively. We've had meetings with them. Uh, they are invited to all the public input sessions. And I think we've worked out a plan, so we'll, we, we will only utilize about four or five acres in an area of that uh, land that is that they can't see from their homes and uh, it, they'll still have their privacy there. The other thing that has come out, I believe, is uh, concerns about the various types of uh, roadway changes, such as roundabouts and some other things. And I really would like to try to assure the public again that uh, when those were recommended by our landscape architect, Beckett and Rader, they were a conceptual study, only one of many different alternatives that could be considered in changing the culture of the corridor from car friendly to pedestrian friendly, just slowing traffic down so people will look at businesses and stop and shop and making it safe for uh, pedestrians as well. So uh, roundabouts are only one thing. Uh, we are uh, in no way suggesting that is what we're going to do. There's a lot more study that needs to be completed on that from uh, MDOT and ultimately it boils down to funding. If we do, if and when we can uh, revamp the commercial corridor, uh, what can we afford to do? And the traffic studies, what do they implicate are the changes that need to be made there. So we've covered a lot. We've even seen a lot of the area that you guys are working with. But what are some, some visions? What are, what's the future looking like? When can people start maybe seeing some of these transitions? Well, that's another great question. Everyone's anxious to, to see what's going to happen next. Yeah. Uh, I think the first thing would be uh, we're putting the finishing, finishing touches on use of the park on Partridge Point. Uh, hopefully that will happen yet this summer. Um, I believe it will. Uh, we're waiting on a permit from the uh, Department of Environmental Quality, DEQ, to put in a couple culverts. So that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is uh, rallying the community around the extension of the Alpena bypass here, as we're currently looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, the third thing is we're working with the federal government, too, on various types of federal granting initiatives. Uh, there are uh, some, a lot more dollars available at the federal level than there are at the state level. Things such as uh, transportation improvement grants or TIGER grants, we're looking at that. Uh, we're looking uh, at another grant through the Economic Development Association through one of our own natives. Uh, Lee Shuri is a regional representative for our area and he's indicated interest in our project. So we are working on a number of different fronts to try to keep the ball rolling on economic development and those initiatives. A lot more planning needs to happen. Uh, we are also uh, looking at uh, Target Alpina is considering ways to maybe attract developers to the area so we could possibly do an office park or some other type of major business where we could create some jobs right away. And then, uh, of course, we've already talked about the parks and recreation. The parks and recreation will probably be the things that people see first. Cool, very cool. It sounds like, of course, like we said, lots going on, lots to see and great things for people to expect. I mean, is there anything else that you would like to mention about your experiences um, being with South Bay? Well, there is one thing, uh, uh, you know, our project started out in 2012 as a cleanup effort to clean up the roadway and then to paint in 2013 during the summer. But this project has really gone a lot further since then. Uh, we envision this project to be a economic engine for all of Northeast Michigan. This is going to be a gateway project for Northeast Michigan, starting with a spectacular uh, park at the 45th parallel to a pedestrian friendly shopping environment, to, to new jobs and new housing for people. And I think it's something we can all be very proud of. And I just want to thank Alpena because they've been so supportive, as has the media. They're a great community. And <laughs> we are, we're a great community. They, uh, people endorse uh, yeah, improvements like this. And uh, the other, the last thing is that we will be working with the public and make sure the public is aware of what we're thinking about and, uh, and listening to their uh, concerns and and um, hopefully their, uh, you know, stamp of approval on things too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Larry. I really appreciate you sharing your plans with us. Okay. Thank you, Bethany. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us. And please tune in next week for another episode of Insights. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News. 
If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved.